Square on East Tennessee State. Final game of the regular season in the Southern Conference, and regardless of what happens tonight, these two teams already know what their seeding will be for the upcoming tournament. UTC is the number one seed in the Southern Division. East Tennessee State has already wrapped up the number two seed in the North. So as far as that's concerned, tonight's game is meaningless, but Butch, I think confidence on the line tonight, and I think that's a very important key. Well, UTC is coming in with a seven-game win streak, and they're looking to fine-tune their game. They lost their star center, Roger Smith, so they're going to have to adjust. Meanwhile, East Tennessee State University is on a two-game losing streak, and they've got to find their confidence so they can go into the tournament on Friday playing as well as possible. Ironically, last Monday night was senior night in Chattanooga. Four seniors, and head coach Mac McCarthy won the 200th game of his career. This evening, it's senior night in Johnson City, and Alan LaForce looking for his 100th win at East Tennessee State. Two good rivals, two pretty good coaches. Well, you know, as we mentioned earlier, we have seven straight Southern Conference championships reside in the state of Tennessee. Four by ETSU and three by UTC. There's no championship on the line tonight, but there is a lot of bragging rights in the Southern Conference. Let's take a look at keys to the game for both these ball clubs, starting with the UTC Mocs. And as we said, UTC without their inside man, Roger Smith. And that means that a guy like Tony Patterson of East Tennessee State could have a field day. Well, they've got to shut down. the. Now Tony Patterson is the biggest man in the lineup. They're going to have to have good defense on the interior. They must also slow down the tempo because East Tennessee State is 8-0 when they score 80 points. East Tennessee State, as you said, both these ball clubs have pretty good perimeter shooting. East Tennessee State wants to slow down the mocks from the outside. Well, without Smith in the lineup, now perimeter shooting takes on even more meaning, so it's important that ETSU shut down that perimeter game, and they've got to have good play up the middle. We talk baseball about good play up the middle. We're talking about Doggett and Patterson have got to have good game. Let's take a look at what happened to UTC, why they had to reshuffle the deck. Here is Shane Neal, the point guard for the Mox at this point, and he tries to hit 6'10 center Roger Smith. You see the lick and breaks his foot with 318 left to play in the game. So UTC will be without Roger Smith for the remainder of the year. So that means that a freshman, Julian Scott, has the pressure on him. Well, he's got to step up. I like this young freshman. I think he's got a lot of ability, but he'll have to have bigger numbers, and most importantly, he'll have to do it on the defensive end against Tony Patterson. And as far as East Tennessee State is concerned, their point guard Robert Doggett did not have a good game against West Western Carolina Saturday, but he's capable of putting big numbers on the board. Well, he's one of the leading assist guys in the Southern Conference. He's got a lot of experience. This Wake Forest transfer must have a big game. Two pretty good ball clubs, the UTC Box and East Tennessee State, trying to get ready for tournament time. It's the Box and the Bucks coming up next on Sports South. And welcome to the Mini Dome in Johnson City. As we said a moment ago, this is senior night and the four seniors for East Tennessee State being honored with their parents and family before the game. And that does shuffle the deck a little bit. You've been through a, a few of those as a head coach at different levels and that kind of thing. And you wonder sometimes how kids are going to react. Can they put it aside and just go out and play after the ceremony and show of affection to everything else? But I've seen it. I think you have too. I've seen players that couldn't handle it and let them, let it, you know, let them affect it a little bit. Well, that's exactly Exactly right, and Coach LaForce is wondering the same things. This gentleman is looking for his 100th victory tonight, as you can see there on the screen, 99 and 49. But traditionally, uh, Jim, I'd much rather have the team playing senior night and be the home team with the seniors. Uh, emotion might take over for the first minute or two, but usually uh, you get great performances, not only by your seniors, but everybody else. And there you see Coach Mag McCarthy, who did pick up his 200th victory the other night. Now, he's the visiting coach. You don't like to play a team on senior night, but everybody has to do it. Everybody has to go through this. Uh, this weight is tough. Yeah, I understand. It. Ironically, UTC head coach Mac McCarthy was an assistant coach here at East Tennessee State for the first couple of years of his career from 1976 to 78. We mentioned the injury to 6'10 senior Roger Smith, and that means the freshman Julian Scott gets the start at the center position. He has started six games this year and was the number two center, so we'll see if Julian Scott can jump in there, take the role in the starting lineup, and as we see, the veteran front line that was senior Mario Hansen, senior Brandon Bourne, and senior Roger Smith, now is two seniors and a freshman, along with another freshman, Lincoln Walters at the point, and a sophomore John Oliver at the two guards spot. And we take a look at East Tennessee State. They do shuffle their starting lineup for this evening because of senior night. So you see the four seniors playing this evening, along with probably their most consistent guy, 6'7 forward, Phil Powell, who's played well. I like Phil Powell. He's out of Broughton High School in Raleigh, North Carolina. 
excellent, consistent player, good athlete, might be one of the best offensive rebounders in the league. And Coach McCarthy is very concerned tonight about the boards. Well, both coaches, where I spoke with both of them today, they're both concerned and think the boards are going to be a factor that we'll watch early in the game. We mentioned earlier the tallest guy in either lineup now is 6'9 center Tony Patterson, the senior for East Tennessee State. Also, let's take a look at this facility. It is very unique in the fact it is obviously indoors, but they play football and basketball here. So they've had different uh, configurations here at the Mini Dome in Johnson City. And you can see how the football field would run. But when they move the court around, some players have complained before about depth perception. It makes it a little bit tougher to shoot when you don't play in a facility like this very often. Well, it's it's very unique. Uh, one thing they've done in recent years is add two beautiful scoreboards in the end zone. It used to be it was really tough to see the clock at the scoreboard down the end but the depth perception is different this is one of the few places that i would bring my team in early to get a workout so they could get used to this facility we got a great crowd on hand tonight and even though this game isn't for anything real big there sure is a lot of excited folks here jim i was going to say these are two great rivals the mox and east tennessee state the number one crowd to see a college basketball game here was between utc and east tennessee state over 12,000 fans were on hand here a couple of years ago to watch these two ball clubs play. So they're pretty good in-state rivals. We mentioned Mac McCarthy was an assistant coach here. So there's plenty of tie-ins between these two ball clubs. And the other one you talked about was these two ball clubs have, in effect, dominated the Southern Conference, claiming the last seven championships in a row. UTC won one. East Tennessee State then reeled off four straight tournament championships. And the Moccasins have won the last two. Well, these are the two marquee programs uh, in the Southern Conference and in there's a lot of pride on the line here tonight, and I can assure you, we're going to see a great ball game. And as usual, Jim, every time we do a game, it goes right down to the wire. So, folks, buckle your seatbelt and let's take off. This is the final game of the regular season for everyone in the Southern Conference. The tournament begins Thursday night with two games, and then the quarterfinal round Friday, four games Friday, two games Saturday. Championship game will be played on Sunday. As we mentioned, both these ball clubs have already wrapped up their seeds. In fact, seven of the ten teams have already wrapped up up their seating, but this is in the new north-south divisional alignment in the Southern Conference. Every team is playing their, quote, natural rival on the final game of the season. UTC leads this overall series. There have been 50 games, and you can see how close it is, 27-23. And these two teams met on February the 4th with UTC in Chattanooga winning by 11. That game, by the way, Jim, was marked with great shooting by UTC and very poor shooting by ETSU. So tonight we'll see if they can reverse the roles. A home court is a tremendous advantage. And by the way, Tony Patterson was, was hurt during that game. Now tonight, Roger Smith's out of this game. So each time the big man for the opposite visiting team has been out of action. That game between the Mox and East Tennessee State in Chattanooga began UTC's seven-game winning streak. They have not lost a game in the month of February, starting with the win February 4th against East Tennessee State, 87-76. We're ready to get underway, and you see the freshman in the dark uniform. That's Julian Scott, 6'7", 245, and the Bucks have the tip. East Tennessee State, not a real confident ball club right now in the fact that they've lost two games in a row. UTC starting out in a zone, and this is one of the differences. The Mox have played a lot of zone this year, but they say they will play even more without 6'10", center Rogers. Well, that will get you out of the zone pretty quick right there. And that's the emotion of senior night. First shot, three-pointer, nothing but net. Robert Doggett for East Tennessee State gets him on the board. Senior out of Reedsville, North Carolina. This is Mario Hansen, another senior. Hansen has got good ball handling ability and can bring the ball up court and will do so occasionally for the uh, the Mox. Let's see Julian Scott operating inside. Turn on fadeaway. That'll help his confidence a little bit. How about that for a freshman? He says, hey, just because I'm a freshman doesn't mean I can't play on senior night. Julian Scott, UTC with two freshmen in their lineup. This is Jeff Herman to Patterson. Nice pass inside. Easy chance, easy basket. Got to play a little bit better defense that time. Uh, and immediately East Tennessee State jumps in full court pressure. And they'll do a lot of this tonight. UTC had problems at the point guard spot earlier in the year, and this is the guy that's emerged, Lincoln Walters, a freshman from Jacksonville, Florida. I thought Coach McCarthy did a nice job in letting this young man just gain his confidence as the season went along and not putting him in there too early, and it's paid off because he's playing and has all year with a lot of confidence and ability, of course. Lincoln Walters, a crowd favorite in Chattanooga. Mario Hansen, who injured his shoulder about 10 days ago, still a little bit tender, and after the shoulder injury, has not shot it too well. He's going to have to pick up his game, not only tonight, but as we go into the tournament because of the fact of the loss of Smith. Lincoln Walters with the runner, but stuck away from him. Here's Jeff Herman. Herman, nice pass. No, not a good 
good pass. It goes out of bounds. UTC gets it back. Jeff. Ironically, Jeff Herman, who's a Chattanooga native, prepped at Tyner High School, led them to the state championship game in the state of Tennessee. Started out his career at Austin P, and then transferred to East Tennessee State. Jeff doesn't usually pass the ball. He looks at the score more, and I think he caught everybody surprise when he, by surprise when he gave it up. I recall in the preseason when I was here for football, John Schulman, one of their assistant coaches, says, boy, we're really coming together. He said, Jeff Herman even passed it the other day. Brandon Bourne's three-pointer didn't go. And East Tennessee State with a rebound. But Jeff Herman averages in double figures, and he is a key part, especially off the dribble. Bill Powell can't get it to roll. Great pass by Doggett. Unusual for uh, Powell to miss that in, the, in that close, but uh, good defense by the uh, by the Mox. Still a 5-2 lead for East Tennessee State, but the Bucs have had several easy scoring opportunities and haven't been able to cash in. Coach McCarthy wants to change up defensively, give him different looks, and likes his own look. John Oliver, free throw line, a little bit short. Rebound, there's Powell once again. Uh, Chattanooga has not had very good looks. Every shot's been highly contested so far here early in the game. Near side, there's Jeff Herman passing it. Perimeter. Jumper. If East Tennessee three. passes the ball like that, they're going to be tough to beat. That's as unselfish as I've seen them all year, and that's making the extra pass, which results in a high percentage shot. And as a coach, you look for that early in the game, Jim. A six-point lead and a charge called on UTC's Mario Hansen, so things going right for East Tennessee State. And when the Bucks start out well, they have a great record this year. Well, they really do. Here we'll see a replay coming up of the charge. Hansen, again, not a, not a natural guard, but a pretty good ball handler. Uh, Junior draws a charge on him there right in the middle of the floor. And again, UTC must uh, just settle down, keep their poise, and let this senior emotion die down. They'll be all right. There's Junior Floyd, penetration. Jeff Herman, there's a three attempt. Off no good. Rebound goes wrong. Bucks get it back. East Tennessee State dominant here in the early going. An 8-2 lead about three minutes in. Tony Patterson. He can shoot it. Didn't get the roll that time. Brandon Bourne with a rebound, a senior. And the other senior in the UTC lineup is Mario Hansen. Lots of open shots against that zone. Lazy pass. Let's see what Doggett does with it. That's a royal flush at the other end. And it's a 10-2 early lead for the Bucks. East Tennessee State playing off the emotion here early, opening up an eight-point lead. Great pressure man-to-man -man by the East Tennessee State team right now. You can see led by Doggett right here. He's really, that's a senior versus the freshman right here with the ball. Lincoln Walters bounce pass into Julian Scott. Scott on the perimeter. Mario Hansen three. Rims out. Brandon Bourne with the follow-up. He didn't look real confident. Brandon Bourne was getting ready for a Tony Patterson block. It altered his shot, but he was still able to put it down. Second basket of the game, and it's a 10-4 lead for East Tennessee State. Four minutes into the game, and how do you see? Boy, that's a foul. Again, Phil Powell, three times now that I can remember, has had great looks at the basket, and no one is really rooting him out of the lane. Well, Coach McCarthy will probably soon be switching defenses. What they do, they get the ball to Patterson here in the middle. The middle of this zone is open, and Patterson on a touch pass right to Powell on the baseline, going up strong and drawing the foul, and he'll go to the line to shoot two. East Tennessee State found the weak spot in the zone. Phil Powell is a 72% free throw shooter, looking for points three and four of the night. There's number three. We can invite our fans and TV viewers to watch the tempo of this game. Remember now, East Tennessee wants 80 points or more, and Chattanooga would like to have this game in the 60s. So we'll watch. It's 11 to 4, and definitely uh, the Bucks are in, in control right now. Well, Powell misses. Hits one out of two. He's got three points. East Tennessee State averages 79 points per game, and UTC 77.5. Both these ball clubs can and will shoot the three. Lincoln Walters, the freshman from Jacksonville, Florida. Nice feet inside to Julian Scott against Tony Patterson. That's two of the three baskets that UTC has by the freshman Julian Scott. They're getting the ball. Both teams are getting the ball inside and getting high percentage shots. They've had great looks at the basket. Another three-point attempt. Julia Floyd puts it up and in. He is a leading three-point shooter on the East Tennessee State. And, Jim, listen to this. They've got eight guys on East Tennessee shooting better than 33% from the three-point line. And, and East, uh, Chattanooga has five. That's 13 players this game shooting better than 33%, which is maybe an NCAA record. Junior Floyd hitting 43% from three-point range. And John Oliver, little dribble penetration, kind of an off-balance shot, but he gets it to go. Well, good concentration by John Oliver, and it's good to see him get off uh, 
a good start if you're a, if you're a mock fan. Doggett. There's Junior Floyd. Nice pump fake. Nice feed again. Tony Patterson underneath goes up reverse layup on go. Rebound. UTC comes away with it. John Oliver inside. That was a great shot, but Coach Force and I were uh, talking earlier today. They've got to learn to finish those plays and come get the job done. They've been just a few points and a few little things would have been a whole different team for East Tennessee State this year. Brandon Bourne against Powell. And a traveling violation against Brandon Bourne. Ted Valentine, a veteran official, uh, he caught that one. East Tennessee State with a six-point lead, 14-8 with 14-31 left to play in the first half. All bucks here on the early going. East Tennessee State with a lead over UT Chattanooga, 14-8. And you see Mario Hansen, a senior, throws a lazy pass. Lincoln Walters can't get it. Then you see Robert Doggett off, the, off to the races. The 6'3 guard knows what to do with it. To the rack and deposit like a bank deposit. That was a sure deposit. Couple of changes in the UTC lineup now. Shane Neal and Pat Henderson in the game. Neal replacing Lincoln Walters at the point. Pat Henderson replacing Julian Scott inside. Chattanooga comes out and changes defense. Shane Neal's in the game and he had a career high or at least a, a yearly high against uh, East Tennessee State up at uh, Chattanooga. 14 points. Tony Patterson gets it down, his first field goal, and East Tennessee State again with that eight-point lead, 16-8. 14.08 left to play first half. East Tennessee State is led by eight points three times, 10-2, 14-6, and now 16-8. Brandon Bourne, that's John Oliver out in front to Shane Neal, almost stolen away. The defense thus far by East Tennessee State, a lot of hands in the passing lane here in the early going. They're a pressure man-to-man, -man. get out and play the passing lanes, and you see Chattanooga really spreading it out, trying to get some backdoor cuts and to, to get some penetration off the dribble to break down this pressure. Shane Neal pull up jumper, one go. John Oliver offensive rebound, no one blocked out for East Tennessee State, and Oliver was right there. Well, that's two offensive rebounds for uh, UTC, and I know Coach LaForce, both coaches are very concerned about that. We mentioned a lot about UTC 6'10 center Roger Smith, who injured his foot, broke a bone in his foot in the Citadel game. Box also, nice steal that time by Pat Henderson, who tapped it to Mario Hansen. But UTC also without Rodney Lemons, who has high blood pressure. And so he will not play, probably in the Southern Conference Tournament. We'll see. Nice look inside to Brandon Bourne. We've had a bunch of easy baskets tonight. Brandon Born gets that one down for UTC and the Bucks lead, which was eight, is now down to four, 16 to 12. Both teams are shooting very well. Junior Floyd three. He nails it again. He's having a great senior night. He's already hit three three pointers and has nine of the 19 points the Bucks have put on the board. Well, he's got the hat trick. I believe that's three threes in a row. Uh, that's nine points. You can get your average up pretty quick. Pretty good senior night already for uh, Junior Floyd. Seven-point lead for East Tennessee State. Look how, look how wide uh, UTC is. They're trying to spread it out so they can get some penetration. And uh, Jeff Herman, they say a clean block. Herman brings it down the floor. Floyd feels it. Yes. Four in a row. Senior momentum is up. They're, they're up 10. And East Tennessee State goes up 22-12, their biggest lead of 10-point advantage. One thing Chattanooga hadn't got this year, they've had in the past. They don't have that guy that can penetrate off the dribble like they have in the past. And if they did, they could really hurt this defense, but since they don't. Pat Henderson slams it off the glass, won't go. East Tennessee State with a rebound. Jeff Herman. Herman out of Chattanooga. Pull up. It's off. No good. Rebound tap to Brandon Bourne. East Tennessee State, kind of a streaky ball club, you would say, but they're on a the roll a little bit right now. Well, Herman's definitely streaky, and uh, I believe Junior Floyd has shown us he is streaky, and he's in a great streak yeah, right he, now. He's in the zone right now, and I tell you, you want the ball. 11.47 left to play first half. Bucks on a roll right now. East Tennessee State with a 10-point lead over the UTC Mox in the Mini Dome here in Johnson City. 10-point lead for East Tennessee State as the Bucks have been on a roll here in the early going. UTC's John Oliver stripped by Jeff Herman. Herman brings it back the other way. And the Bucks continue their hot shooting here in the first half. Jeff Herman with the nice dish. Gives it to Junior Floyd. He is perfect. He is nailing those threes. That is his fourth three-pointer of the first half. So Junior Floyd of East Tennessee State, the senior from Gastonia, who only averages 5.3 points per game, already with 12 points on the board, 12 of the 20 the Bucks have scored. Coach LaForce, uh, 
who's celebrating his 60th birthday today, has 11 different starting lineups so far this year, but he, he must like this one. John Oliver tripped again, and Pat Henderson picks up the loose ball. UTC got a reset of the shot clock, and I think that's what the officials are talking about right now. I don't know if that ball ever hit the rim, and I think they are going to, yeah, that's exactly what they're doing. John Oliver drove and penetrated the baseline, and it never hit the rim, but they reset the shot clock, and now they think they're going to bring it down. Right now they have 27 on the shot clock, so it's not in single figures. We've got a veteran crew of officials here tonight, and they picked that up right away, and an excellent call on their part. Very alert. Pat Henderson will inbound, and it goes to Shane Neal between the circles out in front. Shane Neal's brother, Craig Noodles, played for Georgia Tech and had a great career. Also saw some playing time in the NBA. There's John Oliver to Shane have, Neal. You're going to have to meet every pass if you're UTC because they're running through every pass lane. That's why they had a couple turnovers. And a foul on East Tennessee State as the Bucks that time ran through Shane Neal. Justin McClellan picks up, I believe, that personal foul. McClellan picks up personal number one, and that's team foul number two against East Tennessee State. Bucks very aggressive here in the early going. McClellan, a junior from Cookville, 6'6", 198. Very, very good player. A lot of depth on this team. Pass inside, but ripped away from Julian Scott, and a foul called inside again. A lot of ball, but also, I think, a lot of forearm. And McClellan might be singled out again. Well, you're going to see a convention right around uh, inside here as, we, as they try to go inside to Julian Scott. And you see that McClellan did get him on the arm there. And that's Leslie Brum playing 33. He uh, hasn't seen a lot of play time this year, but he coach the force is working hard. He likes what he's doing. He's going to play him more. UTC with the offensive rebound. Pat Henderson on the wing, and he threw it right to the box inside. Justin McClellan. Three on two. The layup inside by Corey Johnson. Corey Johnson had a great night. 16 points against Western Carolina Saturday. And the Bucs have opened up a 24-12 lead on UTC. I love Corey Johnson. He's quick and he can shoot. Here's a backdoor cut. Layup, foul, block, charge, block, block. Should uh, Oliver's got to learn to complete that play, though. I mean, he's right there delivering the ball off the boards. Uh, Should have had three points there. He'll go to the free throw line to shoot, too. But that was on the backdoor cut. That's the only thing that really UTC has to release the pressure that they're getting from East Tennessee State because as they don't have what they've had in teams past, and that is the great penetrator to take the ball to the hoop and break down the defense. So they're going to have to depend on spreading it out and back cutting soon. Leslie Bruin called for the personal foul. John Oliver goes to the free throw line to shoot two. Oliver, the sophomore, former player of the year in the state of Alabama. And he misses the first free throw. John Oliver, four points already. Box have divided up their scoring with only three players. Oliver, four points. Julian Scott with four. And Brandon Bourne with four. Titus Shelton now in the game for East Tennessee State. He, he's from down my way, Jim. Spartanburg, Norman High School. has been an instrumental player as a freshman. John Oliver hits one of the two to make it 24 to 13. East Tennessee State's lead still at 11. Under 11 minutes to play in the first half. 24-13, East Tennessee State. Bucks have led throughout. They've never trailed. Little flex offense here, a little back screen, down screen action by East Tennessee State. That's Robert Doggett. Out in front for the Bucks, Corey Johnson, the good shooter you talked about a moment ago. McClellan with Pat Henderson on him. A lot of athletic ability on this East Tennessee State. Team. Lots of athletes, quickness. Not great size except for Patterson, but they can do it. Jumps a pass inside over Julian Scott. And the rebound off the Bucks and out of bounds as that time Titus Shelton was in there. Great running rebounder. And it goes off him and out of bounds. I like the way that Bourne went after this rebound, though. I haven't seen this in him in a while. This is the, the aggressive Brandon Bourne that they've got to have. Watch, and, and you'll see to hear that Titus Shelton comes over the back. No call, but the ball is uh, blown, does belong to UTC. Ten minutes gone in the first half. 24-13, East Tennessee State with an 11-point lead. Matt Henderson, pass, kick, no. Outlet pass. Here comes Doggett again. Nice dash. No, he couldn't hang on. Threw it a little bit in back of Justin McClellan. And so UTC will get it back. That's what gives coaches either gray hair or no hair because, I mean, he has him set up. He tried to be a little too fancy, and he didn't get the job done. Had an easy basket but didn't convert. With the injury to UTC center Roger Smith, one of the guys that will get more playing time is number four, Terrell Owens. Terrell Owens is an all-Southern Conference receiver in football, and he adds some muscle. 6'3", 204 junior out of Alexander City, Alabama. Plus, he's my bodyguard on the side, too, and he's, he's a very strong, <laughs> likable athlete. Also, Marcus. 
Marcus Watkins in the game for UTC. Back door. Inside, pump fake, Watkins misses. Tip, no. Rebound goes long. Bucks again with a loose ball. Open man. Shane Neal, can he tick it off? No. That's the old East Tennessee State there getting out as soon as you shoot. They're getting out on the break. And I can't believe their percentages. We're going to be surprised at how, how well they're shooting it. Uh, UTC's cooling down just a little bit. But again, they had a great shot, a great backdoor cut, released that pressure, but didn't convert it. East Tennessee State has doubled up. UTC 26-13. Jay Neal penetrates. There's another cut. And it's good. And the foul. Brandon Bourne will get credit for the two. His third field goal of the game. I don't know if we'll get a replay on that or not, but you should see the experience that Brandon Bourne showed on that play. Now watch how he takes this ball strong to the basket. He back cuts, beats the pressure, gets hacked, and still makes the play. Usually a freshman cannot do that. A senior you expect him to do that. And that's what we talk about, finishing the play. That's excellent on Brandon Bourne's ball. Brandon Bourne, very good free throw shooter. So Brandon Bourne now seven points in the game. 26-16. East Tennessee State with a 10-point lead over UTC. Robert Doggett, transfer from Wake Forest. And there's Tony Patterson. Patterson was recruited out of high school by UTC, went to junior college, and then chose East Tennessee State. Inside Doggett with the layup. They're letting him play so far tonight. They really are, and that's just, uh, you know, that's that second effort. Doggett got the first shot blocked, went and got it, and took it strong to the hole, and he too scores. And a great effort, and again, the seniors are dominating this game early now. Lead a dozen for East Tennessee State with eight and a half to play. That's a foul on Corey Johnson. He's got his hands all over Shane Neal, and there's no call. Bucks come back the other way with a four on four. Doggett in the lane. And Brandon Bourne can't wrap up the rebound. Bucks get a second chance. Ball is bouncing right for East Tennessee State. Titus Shelton gives it on the perimeter. There's Corey Johnson three. That's quite. Julian Scott with a rebound, did a good job of botting up on Tony Patterson, denying him the rebound. Now we're seeing, when we talk about tempo, coaches talk about it, announcers talk about it. You're seeing it right here. You see it, UTC walking that ball up. And then when East, East Tennessee gets it, watch how fast they go down the court. Opposite philosophies here tonight based on personnel. Excellent coaching by both guys. Julian Scott, Brandon Bourne, Marcus Watkins can shoot the three. Back to Shane Neal, seven seconds on the shot clock. Shane Neal, five seconds, four seconds. Inside Julian Scott, turn on fadeaway, won't go again. Rebound goes long. It goes out of bounds off of UTC, and East Tennessee State gets it back. Box are going to put John Oliver back in the game, but first to break. 7.31 left to play first half. East Tennessee State has never trailed. Bucks currently lead it by a dozen. Bucks lead it by a dozen once again, and their seniors have dominated the game. Another senior, Robert Doggett, goes inside, has it rejected, but he gets his own back. Robert Doggett inside for East Tennessee State, and the Bucks with another one on the board. East Tennessee State both ball clubs shooting well. The Bucks currently 56% from the field. UTC not a bad percentage at 47%. I don't think this is a game of either team playing very poorly. Rather, it's East Tennessee State playing great basketball here in the first half. And they're known as a second half basketball team. Out front, this is Phil Powell for East Tennessee State. Randy Dotson, number 32, checked in a moment ago. Injured his shoulder and missed three games, but you'll see that shoulder is heavily taped and braced. UTC gets it brought back. Randy Dotson, they're very high on him, and he did win the starting position prior to his injury. He's from Herndon, Virginia, and he's turned in a great uh, freshman year for him. He'll probably be a candidate for the all-freshman team in the Southern Conference. He's Tennessee State by 12. There you can see as he guards Shane Neal, Randy Dotson with that wrap on the left shoulder. Pass to Marcus Watkins, who recovers for UTC. Every pass has got to be sharp, and every pass must be met by UTC because East Tennessee State's playing some great man-to-man -man defense. Come today for John Oliver. Goes in the way and puts it up and in. John Oliver's third field goal. He's got seven points. He just abused the freshman Titus Shelton from Spartanburg that time. He just gave him a little pump fake. Titus left his feet. John took it in there and completed the play. That go round. Ten-point lead for the Bucks. Bill Powell on the perimeter. He's only shot one three-pointer, so not a threat from there. He's an inside. Titus Shelton. Gives it to Patterson. Really steps it to get in there? I don't know. More than one? More than one and a half? 30 to 18, a 12 point lead for East Tennessee State. Shane Neal across the timeline. As we said, they are indeed letting them play so far tonight. Shane Neal looking for the back cut. Instead, he puts it up. No good. He might have traveled. Rebound. Shane Neal in traffic, but can't get it. And Phil Powell comes away with a basketball. 
And stolen away by Brandon Bourne. Outlet pass Marcus Watkins with two of his teammates. Marcus Watkins all the way to the glass, and he lays it up and in. Great speed by Marcus Watkins. He outran with the dribble. He beat East Tennessee down the floor. That turnover was one of the bugaboos of East Tennessee State. Ed Western Carolina resulted in a, a key loss for East Carolina. Yeah, East Tennessee State Ed Western Carolina. Beautiful back cut and Titus Shelton with a reverse layup. And East Tennessee State with a 12-point lead once again. 32-20. Bucks have never trailed. Jumped out to a 3-0 lead on Junior Floyd's three-pointer. Tell you, UTC is going to have to tighten up their defense. They're just giving up too many easy shots. Watch to the three. Oh, go. Brandon Bourne. He might have pushed off. Shane Neal at the free throw line. Inside, Julian Scott puts up the hook. It won't go. Bourne. Pump fake on the rebound. Puts it up. Puts off. No good. And there's Tony Patterson of East Tennessee State with a rebound. As you said, watch the Bucks run. Pump fake. Foul on UTC inside as Titus Shelton got his man up in the air. I'm not certain who uh, UTC has assigned to be the defensive balance on the floor, but uh, they got, they're not getting back. Shane Neal's getting caught under the basket here several times, and again, you see the pass ahead and then the, uh, the personal foul there as he goes up for the uh, shot. I think they'll call that on John Oliver, number 44, who picks up personal foul number one. And so Titus Shelton will go to the free throw line to shoot two. 58% free throw shooter for the year. Shelton, a freshman from Spartanburg, 6'4", 187. His team, Dorman High School, is coached by Mark Freeze down in Spartanburg, was one of the uh, best teams in the state last year. I think I find it interesting to see there's only four team fouls on East Tennessee State and only three on UTC here with only five minutes left in the half. Shelton bangs that one off the glass and makes one of the two. Another change for the Bucs, and they put Junior Floyd back in the ball game. We'll see if Junior Floyd is still as red hot as he was earlier when he canned four three-pointers. I would have put his hands in some uh, warm mittens over there to keep them hot because uh, I don't know if I'd ever taken him out. Lincoln Walters, a freshman, back in the game for UTC, and Walters throws it away as he tried to hit John Oliver, and it went. Oliver went down, and the ball goes out of bounds. Tremendous amount of physical contact. Uh, they just knocked each other down and there wasn't anybody there to receive the pass so it just flowed out of bounds and coach McCarthy's kind of wondering about all the contact away from the ball not allowing his players to uh, to get to the outlets. Dang McCarthy in his 10th year at UTC 201 wins against 97 losses. I think he's one of the premier coaches and, and, and a young star in this business. Stolen away Brandon Bourne. And Brandon Bourne goes to the hole against Doggett. His layup is good. You look at these two coaches, head coaches' numbers, almost 100 wins for Alan LaForce in five years, and there's a charge on Robert Doggett. And Matt McCarthy's been the head coach 10 years and has 200 wins. And even someone like you can figure out that's 20 wins a year. That's pretty good. <laughs> I got it. I was so interested in Doggett here because Robert is a great player, but he hasn't learned yet to get himself under control, and you don't play at one speed all the time. Sometimes you have to adjust and play at 33 speed, and other times you play at 78 speed for all the old people out there in the crowd. I was going to say, there's, there's a bunch of kids that have never seen a run at 33 or 78 ever. Off of East Tennessee State and out of bounds. An 11-point lead for the Bucs, 33-22. Biggest lead for East Tennessee State was a 13-point advantage when the Bucs led 26-13 with just about 10 minutes to play in the first half. 4-14 left, 33-22. Lincoln Walters looks for some of the inbound. Notice we have not seen a lot of Mario Hansen for UTC. And they're only down 11. I love the way Brandon Bourne's playing. I think he's definitely uh, taking his game up a notch. And if we can get Hanson back here in the second half, there's an illegal screen on, uh, on Watkins. And again, I, I'm sure he did it, but... It Four minutes exactly to play in the first half, and the Bucks still hanging on to a double-figure lead. 33-22, Bucks over the box here in Johnson City. You can get a long way from the floor in Johnson City. The Lady Patriots out of Bluff City enjoying the game, I think, although they are a long way away from the action. When you go on the opposite side of the floor, across the track, up to those bleachers, you can hardly see this nice steal by Brandon Moore. Brandon Bourne able to use one hand to shove his man down and use the other hand to dribble, and he'll get the underhand layup for his fourth field goal of the first half. Jim, talk about Brandon Bourne and his hole-in-one. Did you hear about that? Brandon Bourne did have a hole-in-one the other day. In fact, he was playing with a couple of media guys, one of the uh, writers from the Chattanooga oh. Free Press, Bob Gary. In that case, we can't <laughs> trust. We don't know it was valid. There's no credible people. 
Look at this shooting percentage, Jim. East Tennessee State still on fire, and they've gotten some good shots from inside that haven't gone. This one thrown away as they tried to hit the cutter in the lane, but Junior Floyd, now Junior Floyd hasn't passed many times from out there. He better just keep on firing. But that's exactly right, and, and as you say, uh, but I'm sure Coach McCarthy, the mocks are known for their great defense. They're number one in the league in defensive uh, percentage, shooting percentage. Oh, alley-oop, Brandon Bourne off him and out of bounds. The reason Bourne couldn't get to that ball was all the body checking it was going on between him and Philip Powell, and he couldn't get there. So, uh, you know, again, I don't know what decides the referee's going to call it or not call it, but you're trying to make your cut, and you can't get there, and that's why the ball goes out of bounds. UTC had a chance to get it under double figures for the first time in a while. Couldn't do so. Coach McCarthy over there putting in his two cents uh, with the officials. Robert Doggett, a bad feed. Julian Scott with a steal. Box trying to run once again. In Doggett's defense, he is not playing in this natural position. He's more of a, just a regular guard, not a point guard. And, of course, with the injury to Dotson, he's had to pick it up, and he, he can do some great things, but then he can do some terrible mistakes occasionally, too. John Oliver had a brief opening on the perimeter. He is a good set shooter. That one an air ball, and Jeff Herman able to pick it out of midair. Not a very good shot. Jeff Herman in the lane. That's what he can do. He did it. Great drive by Jeff Herman, his first field goal. The Chattanooga native against his hometown team. Great drive inside with the underhand layup, but he's also fouled and will go to the free throw line with a bonus shot. We, we've got a team that's feeling very good. And here you'll see Herman, a little hesitation, strong off one dribble. Wow. That's one for the highlight film right there, I'm telling you. And he'll go to the line to shoot one. One of the four seniors celebrating senior night, Jeff Herman. A lot of emotion in this crowd on this team right now and in this crowd. Biggest lead of the night for East Tennessee State, a 14-point advantage, 36-22. Biggest lead for ETSU. Lincoln Walters almost traveled. Marcus Watkins in the lane. Layup is good, and he was fouled, so Marcus Watkins will go to the free throw line, and he will have the bonus shot opportunity. What you can do at one end, I can do at the other end. That was almost a replay, except he didn't reverse the ball to the other side of the basket, but he took it strong, one power dribble, put it up off the board, and he'll go line. Now we're going to see another great re replay. Great job by our camera guys here. You see a little curl pattern again one power dribble up reverse off the glass kiss it and go to line for one not quite as many style points as jeff herman got a moment ago yeah you got a 10 on one side and <laughs> nine on the other side but i like them both they both result in three points an 11 point lead for east tennessee state under three minutes to play first half 36 25 bucks have never trailed in this first half of play i still think chattanooga can play better defense than they're playing right now i think they've got they can take it up a level when they have to the glass, a beautiful shot off balance angle, and Jeff Herman gets it down once again. See, that's not a great shot because he really wasn't open. That was highly contested by Lincoln Walters, but because of the emotion and because they're feeling good, that one goes in. Julian Scott to Brandon Moore. Scott against Tony Patterson. Up, under, slapped away. Bucks again on the run with a three-on-one break. There's Jeff Herman against Lincoln Walters. And Brandon Bourne with the steal. I keep telling Jeff, Jeff, you haven't passed it all year. Don't pass it now. Shoot it. <laughs> Lincoln Walters, the freshman for UTC across the timeline. Julian Scott on the perimeter. In the lane, there's John Oliver. Lincoln Walters, three. Won't go. Rushing just a little bit. He had a wide open shot, but he rushed it. 38-25, East Tennessee State, a 13-point lead with just over a minute and a half to play first half. Here's Jeff Herman. Junior Floyd, who shot so well in the early going. East, East Tennessee State is at its best when they're moving that ball. They're not at their best when they're doing all this dribble. When you see them pass the ball quickly, that's when they're pretty good. Patterson, a little bit short from the free throw line. And UTC back the other way with a minute 15 to play in the first half. I think I think Mack would like to get this game under 10 points if he could at halftime. He'd feel great. Anything uh, 10 or less would be great for UTC. Marcus Watkins to Lincoln Walters. Lincoln Scott. Again, haven't seen much of Mario Hansen for UTC. And I think he's only got one foul. Mac McCarthy usually pulls players in the first half when they pick up their second foul, but I think he's only got one. Under 10 seconds down the shot clock, Lincoln Walters, nice rotation, but he's short again. Bucks again on the run. In traffic, Doggett, foul. Charge, did they call it charge? And yes, Robert Doggett picks up his second personal foul on the charge. And that time, Lincoln Walters, the freshman, took the heat. 
Now here's the same play as we saw a while ago where he's coming down. He's just going full speed. He never slows down. And I like the idea of putting pressure on the defense, but you have to be under control and Robert's not. It's cost him now. That's going to send him to the bench with at least two, if not three, personal fouls. So for East Tennessee State, Robert Doggett, that is his second. UTC makes a change, and Lincoln Walters will check out. Final minute of play, about a three-second differential between shot clock and game clock. Bucks by 13. John Oliver, Brandon Bourne has it. Brandon Bourne drives the baseline, and he is fouled, and I think Phil Powell will pick up that personal. That's the first time they've called hand check, and there's been a lot of that tonight. You know, that's an emphasis on the rules, but as I mentioned earlier, all three of these officials are, you know, do the Big Ten, they do the ACC, and they're used to letting them play more than sometimes we see in the Southern Conference, and, uh, and both teams are getting a little bit, and that's probably good right here before tournament time because in the tournament, the officials tend to let them play. They want the best players to decide the game, not them. Front end of a winning bonus. And UTC has their best free throw shooter, Brandon Bourne, who gets the first one down. 38-26, 12-point lead for East Tennessee State. Exactly 28 seconds left to play first half. Hard for East Tennessee State to slow anything down, but if they're smart, they'll slow it down here and go in with at least 11-point lead at halftime because there's 28 seconds left on the clock. Shot clock now will be, uh, be off, and uh, they should work it down for one final shot. UTC's Brandon Bourne with 11 points in the first half. Junior Floyd of East Tennessee State with a dozen on four three-pointers. You can see the time left under 20 seconds now. Bucks don't look like they're going to pull it out. Almost bobbled by Corey Johnson. Shane Neal is on him defensively. Corey Johnson is a threat. Long three. That is not the shot you would want. And there's five seconds left to play. Still time for John Oliver. John Oliver on the defender. Three-pointer won't go. And the foul won't go. And so East Tennessee State will take an 11-point lead in the locker room at halftime. After 20 minutes, the Bucks have never trailed and lead it 38-27 to 27 at the half. Mox and Bucks has been all East Tennessee State. Hot shooting by ETSU as we see Mox head basketball coach Matt McCarthy walk off the floor a little bit disappointed as UTC trails it by double figures at halftime. 38-27, it's been all East Tennessee State here in the first 20 minutes. East Tennessee State with the lead at halftime, and let's take a look at the numbers in the first half. Butch, both ball clubs shot awfully well in the first half, but the difference, as you can see, the box have yet to convert from three-point range, and East Tennessee State, based on Junior Floyd's four three-pointers, are five of nine from three-point range. Well, that's great shooting by East Tennessee State, and yet I know Coach McCarthy, uh, he's disappointed in both directions. He needs better offense, he needs better defense. But East Tennessee State has made UTC pay in the fact that we saw the highlight a moment ago when Junior Floyd nailed the three we saw on the highlight. There was no one near him. No one near him. Let's catch up to date on some scores, Jim, if I can, if, if, if we got time right quick. Appalachian State leads 35-33 with 140 left in the first. VMI over Citadel 42-27 at the half. Davidson's up over Furman 26-17 with 152 left in the first. And Marshall is taking control of Georgia Southern 38-27 at half. Uh, I think that's at Georgia Southern, I believe. And as far as seeding is concerned, only the Citadel, Western Carolina, and Furman games, those are the three seeds that are in doubt. And one of those teams is going to have to play in the play-in game Thursday. So really a lot on the line for those three teams on this final day of the regular season. UTC does not start Mario Hansen in the second half, so maybe his shoulder is bothering him again. There must be something physically wrong, because I didn't think he played. And sometimes Coach McCarthy will get upset with players and set them down, but not this long. Lincoln Walters with the air ball. Brandon Bourne can't save it, or does save it, but off of East Tennessee State. Here's Jeff Herman again. Herman operates in the lane. Throws it back out front. Tony Patterson baseline, and they travel on East Tennessee State. That's not Tony's game. He's not a perimeter player. He's a good post-up player, good short range jump shooter, but not a guy to put it on the floor and drive to the basket on a regular basis. Bucks pressuring UTC. There's Doggett, and he's dogging Lincoln Walters, the freshman. Well, we always talked about as coaches, the first five minutes of each half is very important. Right now, I like uh, East Tennessee's come right out of the locker room with the same intensity. Yeah, Herman with the steal on Brandon Bourne, and the layup. Sure, too. And as I said, they meet, they come right out with the same fire they left the floor with. And uh, again, immediately pick up in full court pressure. And so far, the game is going, everything is going in East Tennessee State's direction. 13 point lead for the Bucs. And as we said, they've never trailed. Julian Scott throws it away. Shane Neal is quickly in the game to replace Lincoln Walters. 
That's two turnovers and to start the first two possessions of the second half. Not a good start for the Mocs. Lincoln Walters did not have a good game against the Citadel on Saturday and has struggled so far tonight in and out of the lineup. Shea Neal will take over at the point. Actually, you have two guys that could play the point, Marcus Watkins and Shea Neal. Here's Jeff Herman again. Jeff, Jeff's experienced enough not to leave his feet like that and make the play. Tony Patterson, half hook, won't go. Rebound to ETSU and a foul on UTC inside. Junior Floyd, you can kind of tell he's pumped up for he's, tonight's game. He's enjoying himself. You know, hey, mom and dad are here tonight. We got to put it on, put the show on. There you see, again, he's Tennessee State's Tony Patterson. Got a good look. That's more of his game. And then, Floyd, he should have gone right back up with it. He kind of brought, brought it down to gather himself. But again, he'll go to the free throw line and shoot two. Junior Floyd currently leads all scores with a dozen points in the first half, all from three-point range. He's not the greatest free throw shooter for a guy that shoots so great from three-point range, but I got a feeling tonight just whatever he shoots is going to go in the basket. Yeah, it's ironic. A guy that shoots 43% from three-point range can only shoot 55% from the free throw line with no one on. Is it's the middle part of this game or what? I don't know. He hits one of the two, and so East Tennessee State with a 14-point advantage, 41-27. And here's Marcus Watkins bringing it across the timeline against Jeff Herman. Marcus Watkins, a junior out of Columbus, Georgia. He served in the Gulf War, then came back and finished his education. Now in his first year at UTC. He's been under some pressure situations, and this yeah. is nothing. <laughs> Shane Neal for the box to Brandon Bourne out in front. Bourne, back to John Oliver, his three on the way, and no good. East Tennessee State, they sent a man, but he decided not to throw the long pass. Carmel to Doggett. There's Junior Floyd once again. And the dunk missed. And a foul called inside on UTC. Didn't hear the whistle, but a foul on Julian Scott inside. And maybe that's the reason for the missed dunk. Julian Scott with personal foul number two, team foul number two as well on UTC. Great penetration by Junior Floyd. He's proven he play all aspects of the game. He dishes off to Powell, strong to the basket. And again, you see the foul there on uh, Scott, and uh, that'll send Powell to the line for two. And uh, Powell's been kind of quiet tonight. You know, he has uh, been the most consistent player. But uh, that's his fourth point of the night. And East Tennessee State continues to build their lead now 42-27 early in the second half. Biggest lead for East Tennessee State in the first half was 14. Now they have a 15-point advantage. And a second free throw is also good. So the Bucs open up their biggest lead, 43-27. The biggest lead for the Bucs, and UTC has not scored. East Tennessee State with five on the board to start the second half. They've out outscored UTC 5-0. Shane Neal, layup, good job, Shane Neal, with the open path of the hoop and went and laid it up and in. Nice left-hand shot, but there comes East Tennessee State right back on the break. Pitch ahead to Jeff Herman off the glass, and... You know, you got to get back. The problem with Shane Neal going to the basket like that, it doesn't leave anybody back to guard against the fast break. And, uh, boy, East Tennessee State, they're, they're, uh, they're clicking on all cylinders tonight, Jim. Neal on the perimeter. Now they need some help. Back cut, Marcus Watkins inside. Blocked by Tony Patterson. The Bucks on a roll. You hate to see the home team get happy. Jeff Herman doesn't hit that one, and Brandon Bourne with the rebound. you got to miss once in a while, you know. <laughs> law, law of averages is going to catch up with you. 16-point lead for East Tennessee State. Knox have won seven straight games. I don't like what's happening here tonight, though, without two of their best players. Uh, you got Mario, Mario Hansen sitting on the bench. Of course, Roger Smith out for the season. Uh, it just doesn't look real good right now for the Monks. And Rodney Lemons, another guard who really gave him some defensive help and could can an occasional three with high blood pressure, so he's on the bench as well. And then you take a look at UTC's bench. They have five starters and just four guys on the bench. Now they take Mario Hansen away, so there's only three guys to rotate in now. Right, and, and on the other side, of the, down at the other end of the court, East Tennessee State has great depth, and they can run you to death. Brandon Bourne off the head to Marcus Watkins, and he cans the three. Does Brandon pretty, Bourne get an assist on that? I don't know. That's a pretty neat play. You know, off the head, off the board, uh, and a bank shot. I don't know what his soccer background is, but might have been evident there. 13-point lead for East Tennessee State. UTC picks up another foul. You notice where they got that basket from, Jim? On fast break. I mean, it's been all transition, and again, that's something Chattanooga is going to have to work on before they go in the tournament is getting back and stopping people because I think all year long that's been a little bit of a weakness in their defensive armor is giving up shots, easy shots on the fast break. 
Let's talk about psyche a little bit. Does it ever help you to lose a game going into the tournament when you had won seven in a row? Not, uh, if you're a great team and you're really good and you got all your horses, it probably wouldn't make any difference. But right now, I think that Chattanooga is kind of wondering, you know, with Roger out and now, depending on what Mario's situation is, um, you know, they got to be wondering a little bit. Second free throw, Doggett hits them both, 47-32. Bucks again with that 15-point advantage. Marcus Watkins against Jeff Herman. Watkins into Shane Neal. In the lane, puts it up, no good. But Shane Neal fouled. He'll go to the free throw line to shoot two. Might be Leslie Bruin. He was the one that was most upset, and he does indeed. The junior from Elizabethton picks up that personal foul. So UTC Shane Neal goes to the free throw line. He hits 65% from there. You see Alan LaForce looking for his 100th win as the head coach at East Tennessee State. He was also the head coach of the College of Charleston for many years before that. So he's won 232 games or 231 throughout his career, but 99 of them as the head coach at East Tennessee State. Coach LaForce is an outstanding uh, basketball coach, great fundamentalist, and uh, just a great person. Jay Neal hits just one of the two. Alan LaForce, a low-key individual, but they get the job done. Well, he's intense, though. He doesn't show it, but he's extremely intense. He and I went jogging today here in the Dome, and uh, if he wins tonight, he's probably going to fly me in and have him jog every game for, for the game. In the lane, McCullen, a little bit short. Rebound, Julian Scott ripped it away. 47-33. Fast break, Marcus Watkins cannot beat Jeff Herman. He'll try and three. Rattles off. And I think Brandon Bourne shoved him in the back and will pick up that personal foul. Mr. Bourne's pretty sneaky. That time he didn't get away with it. Well, he, he'll do that every once in a while. And 15:45 um, left to play in the ball game. 47-33. East Tennessee State hanging on to that double-figure lead over the UTC Mox. East Tennessee State with the lead over the UTC Mox. 47-33. And Marcus Watkins for UT Chattanooga. This is the Mock's first three-pointer of the night, a ball club that's made 198 three-pointers coming into this game. That's 199 for the year, and they are falling behind East Tennessee State in that three-point shooting department so far tonight. I'll tell you another tough thing, Jim, is the fact that the style of play that the UTC has makes it difficult to catch up when you're down 15 points with 15 minutes to go. It's like a football team that doesn't pass. They just run. When they get behind, it's hard to catch up. So they're running the wishbone, is that what you're trying to well, tell? Well, they're not exactly <laughs> running the wishbone, but uh, they certainly are controlling tempo. Let's leave room. Three-pointer, yes! Hey, he's one for three on the year. Let me tell you, baby, he's one of my 13 guys in this team shooting 30, on these teams shooting 33%, but that's most unusual, and that's got everybody up. Now he's shooting 50%. He's two out of four for the year. Leslie says, put me out here, coach, and let me shoot. Marcus Watkins of the crowd on their feet and making some noise here in the dome. John Albers high, Arkey shot one go, and there's Doggett with a rebound. Another fast break. And save, no. Turnover East Tennessee State. Bucks again, as you mentioned, to borrow your phrase, got a little bit happy on the fast break. Yeah, they did. They, they, you know, that was pretty good play, though. They tried to get out. They were really out running, and Junior Floyd just uh, tried to get in McClellan, but a little too much, and... Uh, but I'm concerned about UTC's defensive transition, their ability to get back and stop the fast break. Uh, I, I re now, I realize East Tennessee State's got to be one of the best teams in terms of running in the Southern Conference. Mox makes some changes, and here's Mario Hansen back in the game. Alan LaForce enjoying his 60th birthday in style here tonight. He's got a 17-point lead. 17-point lead, biggest lead of the game for East Tennessee State. Pat Henderson just checked in. Chattanooga trying to overcome a 17-point deficit, but when Leslie Bruin starts making three-pointers, you might have to say it's not your night. Boy, that looked like a good block. Might have bodied up a little bit as Marcus Watkins drove the baseline. You know, Watkins, I think, is a good player, Jim. I think he's, looks like tonight to me, he's more relaxed. He knows he's not coming out of the game. Here we'll see a replay. He's driving with a lot of confidence. He powers the ball to the basket. I haven't seen this in him all year, and it might be that he knows that he's got to play. He's not coming out, and he's just gaining uh, more and more confidence as he goes along. Marcus Watkins already with eight points on the board. It's been a while since he was in double figure scoring wise, but has the chance right here. One thing that Coach McCarthy's done a good job of, he's played a lot of people this year, and even though he does have some injuries, uh, you know, he, he the fact that he's played these people early in the season may pay off for him uh, going into the tournament. 
Watkins was a starting guard earlier in the year. And he's now in double figures with 10 points. I just like the way he looks. Uh, he's playing. I can just tell he feels good about his game. 50 to 35. Runner goes for ETSU. Everything going for the Bucs. Corey Johnson scores. And, you know, that's not real bad defense on UTC's part. I mean, uh, but that's just a great play by Corey Johnson, who, in my opinion, other than size, has it all. He's got great quickness, great shooting ability, and good savvy. He's also on my old tattoo team. There's no doubt about it. Shane Neal goes to the basket off the glass. Good. He'll get the basket and a foul on East Tennessee State. What is it about Shane when he plays the, the Bucks? He comes to play. I mean, that was a strong move and something that, again, Shane needs to do if he's going to be successful. Shane Neal will get the basket and will go to the free throw line, 52-37. East Tennessee State with the lead, and they have led since the, well, the entire game, since the early going. Shane Neal with the penetration. A little circus shot there by the little man. Completes the three-point play while we're watching the replay, so that cuts the lead down to 14, but still got a ways to go. 14-point lead, 14 minutes less left to play in the game. East Tennessee State with the lead. They go inside, it's stolen away by Watkins. Back it away. Mario Hansen, he goes all the way. Strip playing. McCarthy strangely silent. Strip the other way. Marcus Watkins spins. Mario Hansen's three-pointer from the corner, yes! Mario Hansen with the three, his first points of the game, and all of a sudden it's 52 to 41. UTC, the three-point play from Shane Neal, now the three-pointer from Mario Hansen, six straight points for the Mox. Six unanswered, games can turn quick. And that's the way to answer. Junior Floyd, his fifth three-pointer of the night. He's got the answer, anytime you need it, go to Junior, he, he knows where the deal is. Shane Neal penetrates in the lane. Brandon Bourne, yes. Great touch. Great touch on a pick and roll. Old buddy Shane Neal and Brandon Bourne hooking up and resulting in a good two points. Corey Johnson loses it, but it goes off of UTC and out of bounds. The Bucks will retain possession. A couple of changes for East Tennessee State. Robert Doggett back in. Tony Patterson back in. Give Leslie Bruin some credit. I know we kidded him on making the three, but he did a good job in getting Tony Patterson some rest, and they didn't lose a beat. Well, as I mentioned, uh, Coach LaFour says he's really been working hard. He's lost weight. He's playing better than he's ever played, and he expects him to see more playing time. Three-pointer again, Corey Johnson. Man's deadly. He's got a great touch. Wide open. Great execution. Almost stolen away by the Bucs. UTC recovers. 57-43. The lead 14 for East Tennessee State. Lincoln Walters back in the game, replacing Shane Neal at the point. And Henderson. Playing way off Henderson. He's got to be careful when they're playing that far off of him when he makes his passes so he doesn't throw it into the defense. Behind the screen, Watkins with a three. You're right, he feels it as well. I can just tell the confidence that he has, but again, only one guard back. Walters got caught on the baseline. They did uh, they did react and get back there. And again, they're going to say Pat Henderson, I think, got... Tony Patterson in the small of the back, and number 22 for UTC will pick up that personal foul. That's probably, that is a good call, no question by Ted Valentine, but I wish they'd call the hand checking out front. You know, you put your hands on them in the post, it's a foul out front, you can do anything you want. We've had better consistency this year than we usually have, but, and it's tough to call these games. I'm trying to have some quick, especially with these athletes. Corey Johnson, boy, there's a little hand check by Lincoln Walters. Yeah, now they called it, just what I was talking about right there. Maybe the officials talked about that at halftime, so we're going to call, start calling a little bit more because it was very physical in the first half. But see, they missed one, and the crowd groaned, and then they called a little touch foul. Lincoln Walters picks up that personal. If you don't call the first one there, you shouldn't call the second one. I think that's what Mac McCarthy's saying right, right now. Right, right. Yeah, you called it, it one way first half, another way the second half, so... That drives coaches crazy, too. Great ball movement. Justin McCollum, offensive? No, they're going to give it to him. How many off-balance shots have we seen tonight, Jim? I mean, this has been a clinic and how to get bumped and make a shot. We've had a lot of three-point plays, both the new three-point and the conventional three-point play. 14-point lead again for East Tennessee State. Pat Henderson says he was set. The well. official said no. He moved underneath him a little bit, and Henderson will pick up another personal foul. No. Zelton Steed, excellent official. We got uh, Raymond Steins and Ted Valentine, as I mentioned earlier. Great, great crew, and that was a good call. Justin McCullen completes a three-point play. As you said, we've had a bunch of those tonight, 61-46. UTC had pulled within 11, but again, it's a 15-point lead with 12 minutes left to play in the game. Marcus Watkins that has shown some signs of heating up into the freshman Lincoln Walters. Mario 
Johnson inside Brandon Warren tapped out of bounds by McClellan and so UTC will retain possession. There's timeout on the floor now. 11:49 left to play in the ball game, and these fans for East Tennessee State in the ball game as the Bucks lead by 15, 61 to 46 with 11:49 left to play. 15-point lead for East Tennessee State. The Bucks have never trailed in the game, jumping on UTC with a three-pointer to start the game, and they have just kept on going. Here's one of your favorites, Corey Johnson. Nothing but net. He squares those shoulders up. Great follow-through. Excellent execution. of baseline out of bounds. And then Marcus Watkins of UTC, junior college transfer. Watkins has taken over more of the scoring slack in this game. He's got 13 points. Well, I think he's going to have, UTC's going to be as good in the tournament as they traditionally are. Uh, he's going to have to pick up the slack and play better than he's played all year, and maybe tonight will be a good uh, springboard for that. Quick foul on Justin McClellan on the inbound pass. That brings it fouls to seven to four. Right now, uh, UTC has seven fouls. East Tennessee State only has four. So uh, ETSU will be shooting one and one from now on and can give up three more fouls. Marcus Watkins of UTC, who we talked about a moment ago, has his season high equaling the 13 he had against Ohio State earlier in the year. Mario Hansen on the way. Back to Watkins out in front. We'll try another short on this one. Well, Dogg got a little piece of that ball, but stolen away by Brandon Bourne. And Brandon Bourne, the garbage man, and grab it and laid it up and in. Hey, Brandon will take him any way you can get him. I'm telling you, he doesn't care. Layup. Inside, Cody Patterson lost it, got it back. And East Tennessee State. No, it's still alive. Patterson goes out, misses it again. Henderson was, oh, well, they called jump ball. Look, the UTC bench going crazy. They said Tony Patterson was on the back. Instead, the officials called jump ball. That brought all the assistance up, and that's most unusual on the <laughs> UTC bench. Coach LaForce, the professor, you just kind of looking up. You can be more relaxed when you got a you know a 13 point lead, but 60, you're never relaxed. 61 48 East Tennessee State with the advantage. Tony Patterson this time doesn't miss. I don't understand that. He kind of went to sleep a little bit. Henderson, I don't know what he was thinking, that's, anticipating a switch or whatever, but Patterson wide open. That's too easy. Lincoln Walters out in front. Mario Hansen another three. This one does not go. And Henderson with a rebound. He goes back up and shoots. That was great defense by East Tennessee State on Mario Hansen, but excellent offensive effort to the boards by Pat Henderson, and he puts an exclamation point on that one. Henderson redeems himself a little bit. You got a battle going on down low between Henderson and Patterson. Oh, he can't get it to go. Loose ball. Guess who gets it? East Tennessee State. It is rolled the right way and bounced the right way for the Bucks so far tonight. Hey, you got to put pressure. You can't let East Tennessee State whip that ball around like they're doing right now. And Tony Patterson again, the extra pass by East Tennessee State, and Tony Patterson has canned two straight, and again, that lead is 15, 65 to 50. Put a little bit more pressure on the ball and force him to dribble. Lincoln Walters with a three, rattles off. Patterson can't hang on. It goes out of bounds, and UTC gets a break. I think UTC is looking a little bit more for the three because they're starting to think in the back of their mind about catching up, but and that's okay, but we still got 10 minutes and 16 seconds left, and you really have to start your catch-up game with the defense. So they're going to have to tighten up defensively, probably go to a little bit, extend their defense out, do a little bit more pressure to try to get some things going here because they're, they're in a hole. UTC coach Mac McCarthy never sits down during the game. He said that occurred one time when everyone took all the seats on the bench. They started winning. He's never sat down yet. Oh. Julian Scott misses everything on the fadeaway. Well, he doesn't pay to get in the game, so he shouldn't <laughs> be allowed to sit down. He doesn't get a seat unless he buys a ticket. He's Tennessee State's Robert Doggett. In the lane, Joe Powell again. The nice pass. Lincoln Walters had it, but he stepped out of bounds. Now, right now, as they do begin to pick up their pressure, it's going to be imperative East Tennessee move that ball like they have been tonight. And if they do, they're going to find the open man. Leslie Bruin, who spelled Tony Patterson and did a great job a few moments ago back in the ball game for ETSU. Now under 10 minutes to play and the lead is still 15 for the Bucks. Titus Shelton back in the ball game for ETSU as well. Lincoln Walters good defense on Corey Johnson. Here's Shelton with Mario Hansen on him. UTC has used several different defenses tonight. And the pass to Corey Johnson almost stolen away. Johnson gets it back, and he lost his defensive man. Puts up the three. This one won't go. Mario Hansen with a rebound. Hansen on the high dribble. Pass to Julian Scott. Scott lays it up and in. I think he got away with a little shuffling of the feet, but uh, no harm, no call. 65-52. 
And will the basket go on the other end? Yes, it will, and he'll get a free throw. Foul called on UTC's John Oliver. I think that's four personal fouls on John Oliver, so he moves into some deep foul trouble. And Marcus Watkins will replace John Oliver in the UTC lineup. Jim, I don't want to beat a dead horse, but you see right down at this end, Scott scores an easy two, and then right back down the court before you can blink your eyes, here comes East Tennessee State, and they got a layup on fast break plus a free throw. Dogged with the play. bonus shot, and it's 68-52. The lead 16 for East Tennessee State. Their biggest lead has been 17. And Henderson away from the basket. Lincoln Walters open for a moment. Now he'll bring it back out in front. Lincoln Walters, freshman point guard. Julian Scott finds Pat Henderson. And a foul called on East Tennessee State. UTC not yet in the bonus situation. Team fouls eight on UTC. This will be just the fifth on East Tennessee State. He got on the force upset. He thought that Mr. Henderson might have taken a step or two inside. Uh, he got grabbed. He got grabbed. You can take your choice of whoever you want to call that foul on. Doesn't make any difference. UTC will inbound. They called it on Corey Johnson, his second. On the front, picked off. Here we go. On one. Three on one. Four on one. Shelton with the jam. You get a four on one, you should get a jam. Well, I thought Titus Shelton held on the ball for a little one second too long, but once they finally got it moving, they found the open man. Bucks, good, good time out here by Mag McCarthy. Bucks with their biggest lead. They've got an 18-point advantage in getting ready for the momentum of the Southern Conference Tournament. 8.49 left to play. 70-52. It's East Tennessee State. Biggest lead of the night. It's an 18-point advantage for the Bucks. <laughs> biggest lead of the night for East Tennessee State. An 18-point advantage for the Bucks. The inbound pass stolen away. Titus Shelton picks it off, and Mario Hansen is the only one back there. And it takes a while, and he never gets any help. You see three bucks, four bucks. It's a four-on-one break. And Shelton, who started it all, ends it all as well. All the way around the horn, like playing hot potato. Now, you're not supposed to be having that much fun. That's in Southern Conference uh, excitement right there. Mario Hansen will inbound for UTC. Let's see if the Mox can make a run. Inside Hanson, double team, throws up the shot and is fouled. So another three-point play opportunity. And the foul called inside, and they call it on Tony Patterson, who picks up only his second personal foul. Conventional, the old-style three-point play. I love it when Mario Hanson or Brandon Bourne get that ball down the block for UTC. It's a very high percentage play. Both guys have the ability to get the ball up there and draw the foul. And Hanson is coming alive now, Jim. You know, he set out a good portion of the, the game. Uh, Coach McCarthy, I'm sure, had his reasons, possible injury, possible motivation, whatever. But anyway, Hanson's back and playing better. Mario Hanson misses the free throw, and Patterson with the rebound. 70-54 East Tennessee State with a 16-point advantage. And about eight and a half minutes left to play in the game. Robert Doggett has played a good game. So has Corey Johnson. Johnson gets around Shea Neal. Goes all the way. No one picks him up. He lays it up and in. And they're going to call an offensive foul. And the question is, no basket. Mr. Valentine, the official, is not shy about making those kinds of calls. Watch this play. So you make the call. Now, technically, by the rules, as long as he said he has the ability to protect himself, I'm talking about the defensive player, Scott, in that case. But I guarantee East Tennessee State saying, hey, he turned and moved, and it shouldn't be that way. And sometimes they teach officials, when you're uncertain, act like you're real certain when you're making that call. So maybe he wasn't certain because he acted real certain. That's the old, I may not be right, but I'm never in doubt. Pat Henderson on the perimeter to Shane Neal out in front. Shane Neal penetrates. He doesn't. Fans want an offensive foul on Neal, and finally a whistle blows against East Tennessee State. We're in the mini dome in Johnson City. Jim Reynolds, along with the former head coach of the Furman Paladins, which has season, which it's hard to believe this is a nothing game. This game means absolutely nothing you're, as far as the seeding is you're concerned. You're dead wrong. <laughs> this is pride in the state of Tennessee. This means everything. And Jim, we're not going to be able to pay all the officials in here tonight because we got 7,000 <laughs> officials up in the stands. They're making every call, and unbelievably, every one of them are for East Tennessee State. Mario Hanson goes free throw line. Front end, one in bonus, and he hits it. 
Now, this is good catch-up basketball because they're scoring points without the clock running, and that's part of, of, of when you're behind of trying to make up some points. And right now, if, if you're East Tennessee State, you want that clock to run. But you mentioned the key. You've got to get some defensive stops. they got to. And yet, if I was East Tennessee State, I wouldn't even think about slowing it down, not with the emotion that they're playing on. They need to keep playing and let the emotion flow. Maybe it gets down to four or three minutes, then they can work the clock a little bit. But it'd be way too early to start thinking about milking it now. 14-point lead for the Bucs. Patterson's baseline will go. Rebound up in the air. And East Tennessee State's Phil Powell. And Bucks can't make him pay. Rebound. Mario Hansen can't hang on. Third shot at the basket. And it results in a Tony Patterson dunk. And he is fouled. And we've got a technical on Tony Patterson for grabbing the rim. Uh, this is going to bring out the Boo Birds. Uh, yeah. Alan LaForce doesn't quite agree. Let's see if we, did he grab the rim or not? Now this is the missed shot. Then you're going to see great effort here by Patterson for the rebound. He loses control. Floyd picks it up, penetrates, dishes off. All right, you gather. Now, pretty good call. The only excuse he has is if somebody was under him. Now you're going to see a better shot. Great work by our camera guys. See, there's nobody under him. And that could be called a little toning. That's probably what the officials is interpreting that as. Brandon Bourne hits the two free throws on the tee, so that's a trade-off. But East Tennessee State, three shots at the basket. They missed the long-range one. Junior Floyd missed one, but Tony Patterson got it and jammed it down. Junior's over here winking at me. He knows he's having a good game. He's having the time of his life. 14-point lead for East Tennessee State. They've never trailed. Mario Hansen's three. Yes, Mario Hansen has warmed up. He's in double figures with 10, and all of a sudden it's just an 11-point game. Plenty of time left. And Shane Neal with a rebound. It goes out of bounds, and who gets it? The uh, be, uh, East Tennessee State. Right now, uh, I still think the bounces of the ball are still going East Tennessee State's way. But there's no question UTC is taking it up a notch, and their concentration is where it needs to be right now. Corey Johnson's three. This one won't go. Rebound tapped and tapped, and Brandon Bourne with the position. Now UTC can pull it to single figures for the first time since midway through the first half. I can tell you, East Tennessee's offense has really slowed down because the last time out we had the eight-minute mark, they were at 70 points. Big possession, I think, for UTC. Last time it was under 10, it was 22-12. Mario Hansen's three won't go. He thought he was fouled. I think there's a little bit of contact there, just enough to bother his concentration. Remember, when uh, East Tennessee gets 80 points, they're 8-0. 80 or more points, they're 8-0. They're only eight away from that right now. There's Junior Floyd into Tony Patterson. Patterson stripped. Mox come back the other way. They've got a three on two. Marcus Watkins to Shane Neal. He almost traveled. Gives it back to Watkins. He'll try a three. Won't go. Rebound. Inside in the layup by Julian Scott. And don't look now, but this is a nine-point game with 6.17 left. Good effort by Brandon Bourne and Shane Neal. Alan LaForce going to call a 20-second timeout just to uh, to break this momentum. Uh, all the emotion right now is over in uh, Chattanooga's corner. So UTC right now has cut it to single figures. East Tennessee State did have a 22-12 lead and took a double figure lead, and they've led by double figures the rest of the way. Shane Neal kicks it off to Marcus Watkins. He misses, but UTC with the offensive rebound. Watch Shane Neal and Brandon Moore and keep it alive. And Julian Scott is the recipient. He picks it up, picks up two points. He ought to give uh, give Bourne and uh, Neal an assist. That was a heads-up play on their part. I'd like to see Neal, when he drives in there, pull up and shoot that short six-footer. But he's looking to pass it off, and maybe it's a good thing in that they were down uh, by about uh, 11 points, and now only nine, as you say, Jim. What does Alan LaForce say right now? He doesn't. Does he say, don't get too happy? We still have a long way to go. Does he say, just keep playing the way you're playing? Well, I, I think you got to get your concentration back, guys. And we haven't scored here in about two minutes, and we need to make sure we're taking good shots and pick up your defensive intensity. This game is not over. If you're UTC, you got to pick up that deep. You got to have some defensive stops here. This is a 9-2 run for UTC, a 9-2 advantage. It was 70-52. Now it's 72-63. Got a little flex offense, a little back screen, down screen action here. Watch the guys cutting on the baseline. 
Jeff Herman back in there for East Tennessee State to Junior Floyd. Mario Hansen guards him. There's Doggett, Marcus Watkins on him. Bill Powell, Brandon Bourne guards him. They've been well scouted. UTC knows the offense. They're running it. Patterson nails it. Tony big Patterson play. has had a big game. He's got a dozen points, and you wonder would he be having that kind of game if Roger Smith was in the lineup, the 6'10 center for UTC. Well, when you take 15 points and 10 rebounds out of your lineup, that's going to affect your team. The noise meter goes all the way up to 9.9 .9 here in the mini dome. Shane Neal penetrates now to Mario Hansen. His three-point attempt on the way. This one no good. Patterson with a rebound. He rips it away in the outlet pass to Jeff Herman. You just don't see college basketball at this level with this much excitement. Uh, the Southern Conference, I can tell you, is play, they play top-notch basketball in this league, and it's exciting to be part of it. East Tennessee State with an 11-point advantage. There's Jeff Herman, a Chattanooga native. Now East Tennessee State is really being methodical in their offense. They're running and getting a good shot, running, working that clock down. Under five minutes to play in the game. Bucks lead it by 11. Got six seconds on the shot clock. Yeah, they have been running down many times tonight. Offensive foul called on Robert Dogg at his third as Marcus Watkins had position that time. He just anticipated. There's a great anticipation by Watkins. He had a fake left and he was come back right. And I tell you, Watkins never left. He stays on his right hand. Watch this. Boom. One quick step. Good call by the official. One of the better games for UTC's junior front of Columbus, Georgia, Marcus Watkins. We already said he equals his season high of 13 points that he had against Ohio State earlier in the year. I believe he's a key for Chattanooga's success in the Southern Conference Tournament. I think Watkins is going to have to play good. And I think this game is what he needed. They call a kick on East Tennessee State, so a fresh 35 on the shot clock for UTC. But more importantly, only 438 on the big clock. Inbound pass. Mario Hansen's three, yes. Boy, his concentration level's gone up a whole nother knot since he's been sitting on that bench. He it, needs to take that with him to Asheville. 74-66, eight-point game. I think the Bucks are saying, boy, we have played great. We lead by what, 20? No, it's eight. UTC has made a nice comeback. There's Doggett on the perimeter, brings it back out in front. Allen LaForce, you see him calling the play right in front of the East Tennessee State bench. Near side it goes Doggett. Doggett in the lane. Can't go. Rebound UTC. Eight-point lead for East Tennessee State. Four minutes, plenty of time left. 74-66. Only need four baskets, and Matt McCarthy's going to call a 20-second timeout to make sure his troops understand that, hey, guys, we're only four two-point baskets down and just a couple three-point baskets down. We are in this basketball game. I think what he's saying here, and correct me if I'm wrong, you've been in those huddles more than I have because I've never been in there, but I think what he's saying is there's plenty of time left. This is only an eight-point game. You don't need a three. You don't need a quick shot. Just run your offense. And, and try and get you be happy with two points. That, that's exactly right. Uh, you, you take what you can get. You don't need three pointers. You got defensive stops. Both teams. I guarantee you that's what Coach LaForce. Here we see a replay of Mario Hansen's three pointer under duress, but he got up. He was strong with it. Great concentration. Delivers the three. A couple three pointers like that have helped cut this lead. But again, at East Tennessee State, Coach LaForce over there saying, guys, defensively, both coaches are talking about defensively. We got to stop the other team. And whichever team does does a better job on that end of the floor is going to win the game. UTC on a 14-4 run. Mario Hansen now 13 points for UTC, all of them in the second half. We might see a set play here, too, by the Mox, just to maybe Bourne or Hansen inside or to shoot a three. Inbound pass to Shane Neal. Under four minutes to play, East Tennessee State is led by as many as 18. They were going looking into Hanson inside, but Patterson playing way off and giving him some double team help. Jay Neal needs some help. Now to Mario Hanson. Marcus Watkins, East Tennessee State, cranked up the heat a little bit defensively once again. Watkins cutter in the lane. Hanson drops it off. Julian Scott lays it up and in. Very unselfish play by Mario Hanson, showing he can play all aspects of the game. And Julian Scott, the freshman, he just keeps getting better. And the fans are really into it now. Six-point game. Bucks, ne Bucks need the home court advantage to help with the fans here, the six-man. Five minutes ago, East Tennessee State led by 18. They go to Tony Patterson. Fade away good. He's hit some tough shots tonight. That was a great shot because I'm telling you, Scott was really lower bodying him and pushing him out, and he still made the basket. That was huge. Coach LaForce yelling for defense. Coach McCarthy needing offensive execution. Eight-point lead for East Tennessee State. These two in-state rivals getting ready for the Southern Conference Tournament, which begins Thursday night in Asheville. Hanson tries another three. This one way off. Patterson is there with a the rebound. He didn't have very good balance that time. He was kind of falling back. So now we might want to work the clock a little bit here and work that clock down. 
UTC really applying the pressure. Jeff Herman has it far side. There might be some backdoor cuts here for East Tennessee State, but Patterson, unfortunately, is going to hang right around the basket, so he kind of clogs it up offensively. Justin McClellan out in front. Mario Hansen guards him. And there's Robert Doggett again with eight seconds on the shot clock. So that's exactly what East Tennessee did. They worked it down. Now let's see if uh, Doggett can deliver. And they call the foul, I think, on UTC's Brandon Bourne. Bourne, a senior, picks up that personal foul, and they just let Robert Doggett operate one-on-one. -on -one. He's 6'3", 193. And he penetrated pretty nicely that time and ended up going to the free throw line where he will shoot two. Team fouls now even at 9-9, nine and nine, and that's something we should mention, Butch, because it was skewed way in favor of East Tennessee State early. Bucks went to the one-and-one one bonus situation very early in the second half, and now the team fouls even at 9. Bear in mind that the next foul on either team will send that team into two shots. Doggett makes it 77-68. The Bucks can move that lead into double figures with just 219 left to play. Well, Doggett is uh, shooting 72% for the free throw line for the year, so he's pretty sure up there. And he shows why, making them both. And there's timeout on the floor. Two minutes and 19 seconds left to play in the regular season as these two ball clubs get ready for tournament time. Bucks again have stretched their lead to 10 points over UTC with just 219 left to play in the game. East Tennessee State by 10. Butch, I think both these ball clubs are doing a good job of throwing that extra pass, and here's a pretty good example. Well, Mario Hansen into Julian Scott, an easy two, very unselfish play by Mario Hansen, but again, we've got a 10-point deficit we've got to overcome if you're a UTC fan, and you've only got two minutes and 19 seconds to do it in. Now you feel a little bit more pressure, I would think, to score maybe two or three on every possession. Now, interesting here, they switch defenses. East Tennessee State has come out in the zone. Very smart move by Alan LaForce to slow down the, uh, the tempo here a little bit and uh, give them a different look to make them take a little bit more time. Great ball move. Mario Hanson, three. Short. Rebound, Jeff Herman. That was a good shot. That's the one they wanted. Excellent ball movement by UTC, but some nights it goes, some nights it doesn't. Ten-point lead for East Tennessee State after UTC pulled within six a moment ago. The Bucks have reeled off four straight points and stretched that lead back to double figures. Bill Powell to the basket. Layup. Sweet boy. He drives, flips it high off the glass, and now you got a 12-point lead. Clock management. You can't fool around now. The clock is your biggest enemy if you're UTC. Hanson loses it. And then a foul on Mario Hanson. We well, never say it's over till it's over, but East Tennessee State looks like they're going to wrap up a tie for uh, the Northern Division, yet they will still maintain the second seed, and they will be playing at, uh, I believe if I'm right, they'll be playing at 2.30 on Friday afternoon. That is correct. The Mocs will be playing at uh, 12 o'clock on Friday, and of course all the games on Sports South right here. Southern Conference Tournament gets underway Friday at 12 noon. That'll be UTC and the winner of Georgia Southern and VMI. We got four big games on Friday and two on Saturday. Tony Patterson misses a free throw. He's had a great second half. Ten points in the second half alone, 14 for the game. So the senior out of Kentucky is going out in style. His fall away off the glass a while ago on that inside move was huge. Remember, they cut it to eight points, and that, that uh, he missed out. He was going to get it before he, he let it go, huh? It wasn't even close. 12-point lead for East Tennessee State after the box pulled within six. Bucks have scored six straight. Brandon Bourne, long three, rattles off. And there's Patterson again. Patterson is not, that's close. Watch it, Mario. Yeah. A little bit of frustration, but he, he's probably saying, what have I got to do to get a foul? But good move here defensively by the uh, by East Tennessee State to come out in the zone. They've got to extend the defense to make sure they get the three-point shooters, and they do. There you see Herman all over Brandon Bourne. He almost makes it. Again, Patterson dominating the boards inside. Hanson has to come in and fouls. Probably does a little too aggressively. He's waiting to hear that whistle. Maybe he didn't hear the whistle with all the noise in here. Tony Patterson, who missed two a moment ago, will be back at the free throw line to shoot two more. He's the man to foul because he's only a 56% shooter. And he's looked about as bad as you can look on the last three. He was too hard on some of them. Then he misses everything like there. And Alan LaForce is going to have a free throw shooting clinic, I think. 116 left to play in East Tennessee State, currently by a dozen. When they score 80, they win. They've got 80 on the board right now. Tony Patterson missed the first free throw. He'll have a second free throw opportunity. We got some scores I'll sneak in while he's shooting his free throw. Western's ahead of Appalachian by 10. 70 to 60 with eight minutes to go in the second half. 
That'll frustrate a coach. You get a guy to miss two free throws, and then you give him the ball back. But that's symbolic of this whole night. Every Most of the bounces have gone East Tennessee State's way. But don't take anything away from the great performance of the Buccaneers. Other scores, VMI leads Citadel 68-64 with 153 left. Marshall substantially ahead of Georgia Southern, 71-48 with 514. And Davidson ahead 50-42 to over Furman with 655. And all those scores are, ex with the exception of Marshall, Georgia Southern, are very important in what's going to happen Thursday and Friday at the Southern Conference Tournament. Yeah, it's really the difference for some of those teams between winning three games to win the tournament and winning four games. So I think that's huge as Doggett makes the first free throw. If Western Carolina wins, they will wrap up the number two seed and will play in the late game, I believe. If Citadel and Furman both lose, I believe Citadel will take the third seed and Furman will have the fourth and have that is the correct. memorable task of having to play four games. 82-68. And the Bucks have stretched it out once again. Hanson's three. Got to tighten up. And UTC wants to call a timeout right here as Mario Hansen hits his fourth three-pointer of the second half. So that shoulder that he injured a couple of games ago, I think it was the Georgia Southern game, a week ago Saturday, 10 days ago, if you will, that shoulder almost kept him out of the starting lineup one week ago. And so I think Mac McCarthy was either resting the shoulder or trying to get Mario Hansen. Mario Hansen is a gamer. People said he was not going to play at all last week. He ended up in the starting lineup. Well, he and Frankie King remind me a lot of each other. They're going to play no matter what the problem. There you see again, hurt shoulder or whatever. He's, he's had a good night once he's gotten into the flow. He didn't play much in the first half, but certainly here in the second half, he's been a big factor in this comeback. Another important key right here, Jim, is that he, uh, UTC only has one more timeout that they can use, and that is crucial when you're trying to catch up. But you're only allowed three plus the 22nd timeout in a TV game. So it puts, it puts you at a really a disadvantage when you're trying to catch up. Normally you have five timeouts if you're not on TV per game. But as I mentioned, when you're televising, you only got three. East Tennessee State trying to get back to the 500 mark in the overall record. They're 12 and 13 entering this game and 57.2 seconds away from breaking a two-game losing streak and heading to Asheville in the Southern Conference Tournament on a roll. This will give uh, Coach Allen LaForce his 100th victory on his 60th birthday. That's a nice birthday present. 100th win at East Tennessee State, but 232 overall, including his years at the College of Charleston. Followed Les Robinson, who uh, was Les's as assistant here at East Tennessee State when the Bucks were as good as you could ever want to be. Les, of course, now at North Carolina State. There's Doggett, followed by Shane Neal, semi-intentionally, and Robert Doggett will go to the free throw line. Everything is a two-shot foul situation in this final minute. 53.9 seconds left. The only, only alternative they have. They can't let the clock run. They've got the foul, and... Uh, you know, in East Tennessee, wants to keep the ball in the best free throw shooter's hands, and this is one of them right here. Doggett made two in a row. And as you see, seven out of seven tonight. That jinxed him right there. He's now seven of eight. But you go on percentages for the year, and the young man shooting 72% going into the game. And uh, you all as a coach you do is just play percentages. Can't help what they do during the game. Shooters roll. 12-point lead for ETSU. Under a minute to play in the game. Marcus Watkins. Mario Hansen's had the hot hand. Hot again. And he drew the foul. Four-point play opportunity as Phil Powell picked up that personal foul. Mario Hansen, this is his fifth three-pointer of the second half. And this will be our first four-pointer of the night. And it's the only thing we haven't seen tonight, Jim, is a four-point play. But I tell you, Coach LaForce talked to me this afternoon about mental mistakes. And there's one right there. You want Powell out there contesting the shot, but not to the point of fouling. Because as I mentioned earlier, now the clock is stopped and you're scoring points. And that's the only hope that Chattanooga has is that clock be stopped. It's funny, Mario Hansen had been in a shooting slump. And that probably continued in the first half of this game, but he has shot himself out of it That's in the good. second half. There's some good things that are happening for UTC tonight. Hansen coming off the bench, seems to be waking up out of his slump. We talked about Watkins and his good performance. Scott getting some valuable time, knowing he's going to have to play now. Powell gets the rebound. He is quickly fouled as Brandon Bourne and Julian Scott surrounded him. Don't leave us, fans, but this 46 seconds may take a little while, but uh, I promise you, you never know what's going to happen. Julian Scott, the freshman, does indeed pick up the personal foul. As we said, everything's a two-shot foul the rest of the way, unless, of course, it's a bonus shot situation that we just saw. Phil Powell goes free throw line, big man, 6'7", but a good free throw shooter as well, 72% for the year, and three out of four so far tonight. 
I know they'd like for uh, they ought they ought to just quit boxing out uh, uh, Patterson, let him go in and get a rebound and foul him. Oh, short on that one. Ooh, that was a brick. You could hear that one on television screen. 83-74. East Tennessee State's lead trimmed to nine. They led by as many as 18. You want to hear the sound swish, not chunk. A little bit of a swish. Yeah, semi-swish. <laughs> Ten-point lead for ETSU. Marcus Watkins tries to get around Jeff Herman. His three is an air ball. It goes out of bounds off of UTC as Julian Scott and Brandon Bourne are crashing the boards. And East Tennessee State will put some instant offense back in and put Corey Johnson in. You know, another uh, idea might be, even though we're just about to run out of time, is to drive it right to the basket because they're really guarding these three-point shooters. They're going to give you the layup. If you had a couple more timeouts left, you could make something happen, but it's going to be difficult now. Again, Doggett quickly fouled to go to the free throw line. East Tennessee State give the Bucks credit. They are putting the ball in the hands of the guy they wanted in. They wanted in Doggett's hands, and now they want it in Corey Johnson's hands, who just checked in. Well, they're getting their good free throw shooters in there. You know, there's a lot of respect between these two teams. You've seen them both congratulate each other, pat each other on the back, and uh, you know these are two of the premier programs in the Southern Conference, and they're ones that uh, everybody's been chasing for years. So uh, we've seen some great basketball here tonight, Jim. Alan LaFour substituting offensively and defensively puts Tony Patterson back in there to play defense. Try to get some rebounds, but I know a rebound, he say, hey, Tony, give it up, baby. Don't let them foul you. 85-74, East Tennessee State again with an 11-point lead. Nobody's leaving. We got about 7,000 plus in here, and they're all sticking around to enjoy this one. Final time they have to see the Bucks here in Johnson City. 12-point lead. Four excellent seniors checking out tonight for the uh, East Tennessee State team. Watkins can't get that one to go, and Phil Powell with the rebound, and Julian Scott fouls him from behind. So Powell, who hit one of two a moment ago, is back at the free throw line with now 28.5 seconds left to play in the game. East Tennessee State slowly pulling away in these last couple of moments. So the Bucs will have led wire to wire, jumped out to a quick three-point lead, and they were as hot as you've seen a team in the Southern Conference this year in the early going when they quickly stretched out their lead to a double-figure advantage in the game and just kept on rolling, were able to repel UTC's charge. When the Mocs pulled within six, then the Bucks reeled off six straight points, I believe, and Tony Patterson, the senior, gets a well-deserved standing ovation. He ends this night with 14 points. Coach LaForce will probably take the seniors out now one at a time and let them get a standing ovation from the crowd here. Uh, a lot of emotion on senior night. It was great to see those parents. And you think about all the years these kids have worked hard to get these scholarships. And the most important thing is they're getting their education and going on in life and becoming a better person. Yeah, anyone that complains about college athletics was not here for the opening ceremony and four seniors and their parents here. <laughs> now, what is that? Three what is there? Oh, my gosh. Mario Hansen with a crazy-looking three. I'd have to say he got fouled. Might have been able to pick up a second four-pointer of the night. But. <laughs> Mario Hansen, I have never seen a shot go like that. Let's see if we've got the replay of that one. Matt I'm McCarthy I'm upset. He thought he was fouled. And Mario, you see him number 31. He was, Jim. I'm going to let you describe it if we happen to have it because I can't describe it. Mario Hansen was not only falling back, he was on the way down. I'm telling you, watch, watch this. <laughs> Let's watch this. Mario Hansen, pump fake, and throws it up there. Did they get him three for that? That was not a three. That was definitely a two-point basket. Well, I tell you what, it, you can see better from the other angle, and again, that shows you the contact, but I'm not sure Mario didn't initiate it, so maybe it was a good call. Robert Doggett hits him both, and the Bucks can celebrate now with just 17.3 seconds left. And again, a 10-point lead for East Tennessee State. Mario Hansen, he's feeling it. Can he do it again? No, not this time. Slapped up in the air. Shane Neal, he'll try the three-pointer. Pump fake, puts it up off the glass. No good. Brandon Bourne with a follow-up two. And the Mocs stop the clock with 2.8 seconds left to play in the game. And you can tell that goes over real well as Brandon Bourne with the follow-up to make it 87-79. to 79. You, Let me explain that to our fans. What you do, you, you, you don't have a... a pro, you, you, you really have a dilemma here as a coach. You teach your kids you don't ever quit, and you don't want to give up, but it's really tough because it's, it's impossible to win this basketball game right now, but Coach McCarthy's just getting that point across that we don't ever give up. We do the very best we can, and then we live with the results. East Tennessee State 87-79, to so the Bucks 
who came into this game averaging 79 points per game, put 87 on the board, and it should set the stage for a great Southern Conference tournament. UTC will lead things off in our Sports South coverage. The Moccasins play at 12 noon, and on Friday, four big games. UTC playing in game one against either Georgia Southern or VMI, and game two will have the same East Tennessee State Ball Club against either Citadel, Furman, or Western Carolina, depending on what occurs this evening. So it should be four great games on Friday. It looks like in the second half of that doubleheader, Marshall will take on either Appalachian State, Citadel, Western, or Furman. And then the late game appears as if it'll be Western Carolina and Davidson. But some crazy things can still happen in the league tonight. We're not here with a with a playing off the passer. They're trying to prevent the long layup, and they're going to all out deny, probably switch every screen and try to keep getting the ball inbound. And it, board, and it works to Mario Hansen. He'll try the long. Symbolically in this game on a three-pointer like that because we had nothing but three-pointers But in a game that had 13 guys that shoot the three-pointer. What do we expect? So you see Mac McCarthy is Alan LaForest give coach LaForest credit. That's East Tennessee State win number 100 for Alan LaForest and the UTC Mox will go into Southern Conference Tournament play as the number one seed in the South, East Tennessee State, the number two seed in the North. Bucks lead wire to wire and end up with a five-point win. For Butch Estes, this is Jim Marlowe's reporting from Johnson C.